Hey, sunny and busy. I'm so excited to finally get to talk to you. I'm oh, sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were we your favorite team too we're everyone's favorites everyone's it, everyone's telling you that huh well that's gotta yeah. be good well they're telling they're not telling us like all the other teams that we've been talking to say they're getting hate mail or messages and like oh we haven't gotten any of that oh well that's 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 encouraging um, yeah <laughs> what's the best thing someone said to you so far um the, uh, we need more sunny and busy we should have our own spin-off show traveling <laughs> <laughs> traveling moms traveling mom spinoff show with challenges yeah. i would watch that especially if there's a rebus puzzle every week oh, oh my oh, god give us that rebus puzzle, puzzle. now that i know what it is i can knock those out of the park <laughs> i know <laughs> and we're putting our bid in for all stars now so yeah we'll be in all right all, -star seat. all right noted well i think the first thing we have to go back to i think I want to know more about the navigation struggles that you had on this last leg because what struggles? <laughs> oh, I yeah, I know what struggles. Because <laughs> uh, I've actually been to that area and I know that there oh, are wow. many plazas, and I know, but I also know that, that was old not cities. a plaza. <laughs> it was, was not. A, that, was that was a board. That was a bistro on the side of a street <laughs> with an outdoor cafe. That was not a plaza. <laughs> so what the exactly could you up there? Quickly. Yeah. The word okay. plaza is very triggering. So yeah, <laughs> we passed that plaza probably twenty five times. Yeah, twenty five. Wow. That food, we passed that food court. That was not when you see a plaza. It's a huge. Like the first episode had a plaza. It's big. It has a big statue. It has a huge fountain. It has something, and it says plaza. And this There's was like no a way that was a plaza. Lowercase p plaza, right? Yeah, <laughs> no plaza. It was a there was a baby fountain in the middle of it. You yeah, know, I have one of those in my backyard. Plaza. That's not a plaza. <laughs> backyard plaza. It's amazing. Yeah, no. that was that was a struggle. Well, like we we passed by at least twenty five times, and we just kept going around and around. And we probably were right next to it, and we're like, "Hey, do you know where this is?" And people were like, "What?" So I don't know where we got confused. Besides language, you know, like we said mm -hmm. the specific words, we showed them the words of what plaza we were looking for. So I'm not sure that was that's part of the the challenges on the Amazing Race, though. Is like, you know, Iguana Bridge. Nobody had ever heard of that, and that other the past like like they use yeah they use different words that locals may not recognize. You yeah, because it's called something else to the local people, or they call it something else than it actually is named, and it's not certainly not the name on the map. It's uh, not Google's, no. Nope. <laughs> and I so, feel like yeah. the Spanish speaking, the Spanish speaking, really got to us, and our ability to communicate to to locals to ask um, uh, for directions, and their phones being in Spanish, and us trying to use their phones that are in Spanish is just. That was a killer. Um, but again, when we come back from All Stars or when we go to All Stars, I am taking a course on navigation. I am coming back now as a breast cancer survivor. And yeah. we we are just gonna kick butt in All Stars. And I feel like that'll be the, the cream of the and, crop because it'll be an all stars. And season. honestly, like if like every country we went to was Spanish speaking. If we didn't, there, there's teams that speak Spanish. They had a huge advantage. We didn't advantage. We thought, okay, next country we go to won't be Spanish speaking. We'll be able to come back from that. We'll all be a little bit more even. It just would, every country was Spanish speaking. Huge advantage. Huge. That, that was, huge. that did appear to be a, a difficulty for a few of the teams actually. Uh, but I want to talk about one of your strengths because I think this was really, really cool to watch. You steered out of a skid so many times with your ability to knock tasks out really really fast and we're the comeback kids yeah. yeah i i would love to know um what did you actually do to prepare task wise because it seems very clear to me that you did do a lot of a lot of research a lot of preparation or is that just your natural skill set we just nat it That's was my all natural gifted natural i actually skills. was like when we did that skateboard, I will say like, we thought busy was going to be skateboarding. And so we were like, okay, busy, I can't skateboard. You better do this. She's like, I got this. And I'm the mechanic. And she gets in there. I was like, oh my God, this is, we're going to, she's not going to get this. 
I can't believe they didn't show that because I was like, she's not going to get this. She's never done anything. She said she's never assembled anything. She's not going to get this. And she just nailed it. She like, you know, that skill set came from that came from putting together all these Christmas toys. (laughs) Open up but, a yeah, that's our natural parts. The kid wants to play with it. You got to put the batteries in. You got to put, you know, put it together. That yeah, was all mom, that was all mom training. <laughs> yeah, and so just really listening to each other and just that was just pure skill on all our on our part. So we really think if we came back for an all star season, we would dominate that. We're we're, we're gonna crush all stars. All right noted um i don't have any pull with casting but you know get that put that out in the universe and we'll we'll see what they say uh, i have a question <laughs> i have a question for sunny actually from this past episode you were ta- you were take you took the roadblock but you had busy's helmet on what happened there i did yeah like they they it was very confusing to me to watch this happen because it was like clearly you doing the roadblock and then you had the wrong helmet on I didn't, I didn't know I world. had the wrong helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, so can we talk a little bit about like um, you had said that this was very much your wheelhouse and then you kind of struggled with it and um, not a terrible amount. It seemed like this was actually not, it wasn't a huge sticking point for a lot of people, but can you talk a little bit about the differences between your own experience um, previously and what happened at the roadblock? Yeah the roadblock being the welding right yeah um so w- when when we go to weld that um angle i had done that um we call it hurt training so you weld you learn how to like shore up buildings and you know if somebody's in a if there's a um hurricane or you know whatever kind of a landslide you're basically shoring and building making buildings safe and um cutting angle iron building you know i've used welders a couple times um And so I was like, I got this, but then I was, my back was to the sun. And so the, the glare of the sun was coming right in on the back and I was blind. I like could not see at all any of that angle. (laughs) And so (laughs) anytime that the welder came on, I could see it. But as soon as I took it off and I couldn't figure out, you know, the, it was just, the trick was just to find the right speed and the right, how much um, oxygen they're putting into the gun as, as much as like you know, how it's just kind of streaming along. So yeah, I, I did see a lot of people struggle, but as soon as they got that second one, it was done. And I think that's what I did it in too. So. Yeah, it, it was, it, it did seem like there was kind of a trick to it. And of course this goes back to your natural task strength that I think we saw from both of you throughout the race. Um, do you know how far behind you ended up being ultimately? It was probably about an hour. It was, t- but I want to preface it that with the fact if we would have ended up in third place from episode six, I feel like we pulled out Uruguay yeah. if it was exact same, if we ran the exact same leg, we could have pulled it out. Hmm, for sure. Like, I think the plaza was just like, if, if not for the plazas, right? Yeah. <laughs> not for the plazas. And we were trying to, we were hoping that Juan's uh, food poisoning took him out uh, that's that's <laughs> rough that's so rough <laughs> and like with the whole alliance thing people are asking have been asking us mm-hmm. about the alliance thing like yes this this thing it hurt it hurt to watch but at the same time this is a show and it's a game and um i would have done the exact same thing well you kind of did do the exact same thing i think we saw you kind of compelled to work with yvonne and melissa at a certain point Oh, oh yeah, and, and we, we really, we really, I really like Avon. I mean, the whole entire cast is just built of incredible people. It, you, there is no hate for anybody. <laughs> um, but uh, Melissa and Avon were definitely our closest friends from the cast. That's super cool. And Lizzie, I also have to ask you about your sunglasses because we've been talking about them all oh, yeah. season. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they are what about them they're spectacular like wh- where did you get them and like why are they so huge so i am very sensitive he's a woman of... and they're man glasses <laughs> they're they're, they're man glasses. genderless glasses they're genderless glasses i 
I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive skin. So mm. I'm not great about putting sunscreen on all the time because I, I feel like it, it's not it clogs my pores, then I get acne, and then I have sensitive skin and acne. So I just I honestly use these to shield my face from the sun. And I've used them so much with, with driving and stuff and working out that it, it's just they're just a part of me now. And it's it's like a security blanket. It's like, oh, <laughs> things are going. Things are going so well right now. Oh, okay. No one can see me. No one can see me here. So I I love them. Um, I want everybody to wear them. I think they're great. And you got her kids some big fighter. ones. I can be a firefighter, a mom, and an amazing race contestant in these glasses. So yeah, give you superpowers. They're multi the multifunctional. Yeah. They're beautiful. Um, so is there anything else that you want the listeners to know about your experience? Like something that hasn't been covered or something else that you'd want to let people know you're up to? Well, um, I did get a cancer diagnosis and I, I feel like the amazing race saved my life. Um, I, I, there was concerns about my breast health noted in my physical to be on the show. Oh wow. And I wouldn't have I wouldn't have ordinarily gotten a physical then. And then so I they wrote like, like my doctor's like, okay, she's got these concerns about her left breast. And that was something I did pursue when I got home. Um, but that physical really I was responsible for saving my life. And so and I was only I'm I was only th six, 36 years old when I got diagnosed. So I would like to use this platform, uh, you know. For the amazing race to uh, just bring breast cancer awareness out for younger people because I did not qualify. I did not qualify as high risk. I did not qualify for a mammogram um, at 36. You and mean um, I just had to... MRI? Oh, and a mammogram. Like I had to beg a doctor oh. to give me a mammogram because I wasn't 40 yet. And so mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's nice. I mean, it's not nice, but Olivia Mung, you know, just was diagnosed recently and, um, she's using her platform to do the same thing. And we have a very similar story um, of breast cancer. So I'm glad that she's out there doing that. Well, I, I really, it's, it is a really important and powerful message. And it's amazing. It's amazing to me that going on the amazing race is kind of the, like, it, it seems like everything kind of works out the way it should. And, right. yeah. and, and to be, to get this opportunity, like later in life, like after our families and stuff, for Bill, I mean, was incredible. And it was just seemed like something that was meant to be just yeah, like an it really did. Yeah. And were you were you big fans of the show before going on? Yeah, I mean, I was um, <laughs> my my husband and I used to watch when we were dating, we were like, Oh, where do you want to go on our honeymoon? Let's watch the race. And <laughs> we want you know, use that to travel like jumbo restaurant in Hong Kong that was on the race. Um, but yeah, we used to draft people and have, you know, uh, an amazing race fantasy. I'm not a super fan, though, because we definitely have piddled out since having children watching the race because it's on so late at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not, a, I'm not a I'm huge never, fan. I'm I'm, I've seen the show, but also we don't really watch TV. We don't have TV in our mm -hmm. house. We don't do the TV thing, especially with kids now. So it's not been a, a integral part of my life, but I do appreciate and love the experience and everything that I've been shown the love with the cast and, and all the crew and everything. So it's been really amazing. That's fantastic. Um, I really, we've really enjoyed watching you and um, anytime you want to come back and uh, talk more about Amazing Race, we'd love to have you. Um, definitely don't be strangers. Thanks, oh, Jessica. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks.